I know the Lord and his power, power, power and his power of resurrection. And his power, power, and his power, power, and his power of resurrection. And so, Father, we thank you. We want to know you. We want to know thy power of resurrection. We want to know you more. For without us knowing you, we cannot represent you the way it should be. Please make us to, come, to be convinced all about you. To believe in you. Take away doubt. Take away things that are contrary from us. In the name of Jesus Christ. We are before you tonight. God, please come and speak to us expressly. That your name alone will be glorified. Thank you because we don't an answer. In Jesus name we pray. And we say. Brethren, I count it all privilege to be before you and standing before you to take this message tonight. So, I thank our Father in the Lord and I pray everything will continue to go from glory to glory on him in Jesus' name. Yeah. The message of tonight is evangelism and what? Water baptism. Evangelism and what? Water baptism. Amen. Of course, we will know that it's not the unbeliever that a message of evangelism has to be preached to. No. Evangelism message is preached to them that believe. Before they can embark on the assignment. So, I want to sincerely believe here tonight that I'm having before me people that believe God's message. Amen. So, Evangelism, what is evangelism? Evangelism is nothing more than preaching the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ to the lost souls and turning sinner from their sin to righteousness and which at the end of it all aiming of making them to make heaven. That is evangelism. Turning sinners to saints for heaven. Preaching about the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And why do we go for evangelism? Evangelism call according to how the Lord Jesus beckoned on us, the believers, as I earlier say, in the book of Mark 16. Mark chapter 16, from verse uh, 15. He said, And he said unto them, which is the Lord Jesus communicating to the disciples that believe. 
He now commissioned them, giving them assignment, giving them duty that they should go here into all the world, everywhere, because the earth is of the Lord and the fullness thereof, and they that dwell therein. And preach the gospel to every creature. That is to them that dwell therein. Every creature. Jesus mandated you and I. Meaning this call, this assignment is beyond the international director. Is beyond your overseer. Is beyond your pastor. Is beyond your archbishop and whatever name, namely. So, this commission, this assignment is given to you and I by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, why is this call highly important? Why is this so highly significant, this call of evangelism? Why? One is because of God's lamentation over sinners. God lamentation over sinners. Hallelujah. We will see that in the book of Ezekiel. Please open your Bible to the book of Ezekiel chapter 18 verse 4. Reasons why this call this assignment is so unique on you and on me that we should not neglect it at all because of God's lamentation over sinner. Verse 4, and he said, Behold, all souls are mine. All souls. We are equal before the Lord. Everywhere. Both the white, the black, the hausa, the whichever language you may call. We are all the same before the Lord. The Lord, our God, love everyone well and equally. So all souls are mine. As the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sinned, he shall die. Why this call is so significant in the heart of God? It's because heaven is not for sinners. It's not for sinners. But for them that are holy and righteous. So therefore, you should know, anyone that is a sinner, no heaven for him. And therefore, are you having sinners around you where you live? then it's a consign of God. And so, as a child of God, it should be your consign that this man I'm seeing today, if he failed to know Jesus, if he failed to accept Jesus, if he failed to know this truth, after death, no more hope. You can see some of us weeping here today. It's not that we are weeping. Because of ourselves. No. What makes us to break down, especially my own self, is that how will it be? Had they been I'm standing before the throne of judgment of the Lord, and such is plain before me, what will it be around me? How will I, how will I manage it? How will I be? It's not disheartening of all your labor of all the fasting, of all the vigil, of all the prayer, of all whatever. It's not great. I have not said this anywhere before, but I'm, let me just lay it to you. That ever since I joined this movement in 2012, I have never missed any program. Program at the national at the zone, I have never missed. But look at the rebuke. It's not heartbreaking. You are trying on your own. 
But look at what subordinates can make one to look like. We are before our leader. He have counted. You give excuse. Say that excuse is not acceptable. Now is before man you are counting this. What of before God? Is it not going to be very hard breaking? So, my brethren, it's not easy. Heaven is not easy. So, the cry, the bitterness, the heartbreaking of God is souls going to hell every now and then. Every now and then. Every, as we are sitting now, people are dropping into hell. The lamentation of God over sinners. That is why he is telling us that evangelism is his heartbeat. And we need to stand up for it. Please, let's still go back to Ezekiel 18 verse 20. It says, the soul that sinned, he shall die. Are you seeing how many times this word is being emphasized? That soul that sinned. My brother, your husband that you are speaking to now that is proving so stubborn, when he dies, you have lost him forever. Your wife that you are speaking to and is not yielding, stiff neck, children you are speaking to, they are not yielding. If they die in that sin, hell! God's lamentation over souls. So, it's hell. It's hell. The soul that sinned, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father. Can you see? Individual. Individual. Neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteous of the righteous shall be upon him. You can see our father in the Lord. See the account he gave that time. He just returned back from America. Yeah? And now, see him here. And then maybe in the next week now also, he will be at a quiet bond. All this thing is doing, the reward can never be exchanged. The effort you see him that is laboring is to get our eyes open and stand up for this responsibility by ourselves. To deliver our soul. To deliver your soul. And by so doing, he's washing his hand from every of our blood. So, evangelism is great. It's highly important. It's unique. That's why you can hear him telling us that why can't we call on him if maybe there's a challenge of finance or bringing the people because he knows the value of soul. Value of soul. Just at our concluded uh, minister's conference, daddy transported people from India just two people from India. How many million? Six point something million. I'm aware of this. Two people from India to attend our program in Nigeria here. Two, uh, six point something million was spent. Why? He knows the value of soul. He knows the value of soul. You know the value of soul. That if today, like a reverie, and the Lord say, pam, 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 except those that are righteous, if not all will be damned to hell. And it's not today that God has been facing this. Check it. From Noah, how many were saved? Eight. Check it. Sodom and Gomorrah. How many were saved? Check it like that. And the standard remain like that forever. The standard remain like that forever. God will not compromise his standard. Early enough. 
There was a woman in the former church where I fellowship, that is Redeemed Christian Church of God. This woman was so good and kind to us. We know the role she played when I was to marry. And after this truth came, hey, our burden was, how can we salvage this woman so that she can enjoy her fruit of her labor? We pray, I and my wife, and with some other brother, brethren. We pray, visited this woman, very wealthy woman. As at the time that Komajib were coming to Nigeria, then, I think 2005, uh, six like that, Komajib. Brethren, if, before you mention one or two persons, or three, in Kano, she was part of them. That the clearing of Homer Jeep at that time alone was three point something million. She has it. So, we went to visit her. I and my wife, we went to visit her as we went there with some other brethren. <laughs> this is a woman that when we visited her, anytime we visit her those days, you will see her giving us clothes and other things. But when we take this message to her, that day is like unfortunate to us or somehow. She was even plating attachment. But would that scare us? Never. So we sat with her and said, Mommy, yes, we come with a great burden that this truth, the way we know it here, there is mixing up somewhere. Check it in the life of our mother in the Lord. Follow Adeboye. She is not putting on all these things. But our people are not communicating it to us well. Therefore, this thing, we should not do it. Even Trozi is a sin. This is a sin. He said, she jumped up from where she is. She said, are you telling me now that Joyce Meyer will go to hell? She began to count some other, you know, pastors, whatever. He said that I went to Z. I said, oh. And we opened some nine to her and said, all the nations that forget God, all that turn against God, all God shall turn them to hell. She disbelieved us. In fact, she pushed us away like as you pack shit and we hold to our peace. Are you hearing me? Brethren, it's like that. But after some years, this woman caught illness and she died. Would she say she's not here? Evangelism. Stand up for evangelism, my brother. Preach this word, my sister. Take it to your village. Take it to your community. Take it to your working place. Do all in evangelism. Amen. Then the book of Lamentation, chapter 1. Go back from the book of Ezekiel between Ezekiel and Jeremiah. Chapter 1. I read in verse 12. Lamentation chapter 1 verse 12. And the Bible said, Is it nothing to you? Can you see the lamentation, the cry of God, the burden in the heart of God? Is it nothing to you? All ye that pass by, behold, and see if there be any sorrow like unto my sorrow. God, you don't know the pain. You know the pain in the heart of God that people are not yielding to this truth. That people value material things over the love of Christ over their life. Even over the word of God. You know anything you value more than the word of God becomes your idol. Do you know you are idol worshiper? As the, the Lord is teaching you this. 
showing you all these things in the scripture and you get hold of it, say you will not let go, automatically you are an idol worshiper. You worship idol. So, that is it. Is it nothing to you? All ye that pass by, behold, and see if there be any sorrow like unto my sorrow, which is done unto me, wherewith the Lord had afflicted me in the day of his fierce anger. Fierce anger. Verse 16. For this thing I weep my eye, my eye run it down with water because the comforter that should relieve my soul is far from me. My children are desolate because the enemy prevail. How will they say that Kano, come, if you should mention uh, how many cities will you mention in Nigeria before one will mention Kano? How many cities in Nigeria will you mention? And before you mention Kano to be a part of them. But see the representative of Kano before the Lord. Is it not disheartening? Is it not heartbreaking? Is it not discouraging? So, my brethren, it's a painful thing before the Lord. May God of heaven salvage his humanity speedily in his mercy in the name of Jesus. Jeremiah chapter 9 verse 1. Oh, that my head were waters. My head were waters. He's talking about, he said, see how God is lamenting. Sinner! Those who don't want to break down and tremble before the word of the Lord. The Lord is lamenting. Oh, that my head were, were what? Waters. And my eye a fountain of Yes, that I might weep day and night for the slain of the doctor of my people. God is disheartening. So painful. So painful. So painful. Amen. In Romans chapter 6, verse 23. Let's jump to the New Testament. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. God, show us your mercy in the name of Jesus Christ. He said, for the wages of sin is what? Dead automatically. It's dead. The wages of sin. All these things been mentioning to us of God interesting on what we put on our body, interesting of the, the thought that runs in our heart, of how and manner we are neglecting His word, and we bend never to turn unto Him. The end of it, you die like that you will go to hell. It's hell. So, we pray that the Lord will be merciful to us tonight, that we will yield to him. In Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, second reason why we must rise up for evangelism is the world is ignorant of Jesus. Is that not true? Is the world not ignorant of Jesus? It's not ignorant of Jesus. The world is ignorant of Jesus. Ignorant of Jesus. Revelation chapter 3. In verse 9. 
the book of Revelation chapter 3 in verse 9. The world is ignorant of Jesus. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan. Who we'll say they are Jews? Are you hearing? Many big churches, cathedrals, they are there bearing the, the signboard of the name of Jesus. But are they really for Jesus? Are they not brought way to hell? By pretending that they are Jews and which they are not. And are not. But do lie. They know what they are doing behind the curtain. They know it. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. Ignorant of Jesus. Even the, the, the so-called church of Christ. John 8 verse 12. John chapter 8 in verse 12. John 8 verse 12. The Bible say, Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. Are you hearing that? He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. But how many of them know Jesus? How many? Full of ignorance. Darkness is just hovering everywhere. Matthew 5 verse 14. Matthew chapter 5 in verse 14. Five fourteen, and the word of God said, "Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be what hid." Amen. Amen. So, because the world lie where in darkness, if you fail to shine, then everywhere will be covered. Everywhere will be in total darkness. So that is why the Lord is telling you, my brother, I know why I leave you on the earth. It's for you to be a light to the world. It's for you to shine anywhere you go so that people can see Jesus in you. So that you can at least bring some to the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So that is it. Let's go to the book of Matthew 15, verse 14. Amen. 15, 14. It said, let them alone. Let them what? Alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. If you leave this world alone, the world automatically is blind. They don't know anything about God. And if the blind lead the blind, what will happen to them? They will fall into the ditch. The world is in blindness. So, my brother, my sister, this truth that the Lord revealed to you and I, many do not know it. Many, they don't know it. And you that knows this truth, you don't want to publicize it. You don't, know, you don't want to say it. And in this movement, God simplified method of evangelism made simple for us. That you don't even need 
to be sitting with somebody because of the way and manner. Everybody is in a rush now. You can go in so many ways evangelizing. And the evangelism will work. Amen. So, the world is in complete world blindness. Isaiah 28, 7 and 8. The book of Isaiah, chapter 28, 7 and 8 of Isaiah. 7 and 8. Amen. But they also have air through wine and through strong drink are out of the way. The priest and the prophet have air through strong drink. They are swallowed up of wine. They are out of the way through strong drink. They air in vision. They stumble in judgment. Are we seeing it? In verse 8, for all tables are full of vomit. Are you hearing? Full of what? Vomit and feel and filthiness, so that there is no place clean. I mean the word total darkness. Our Father in law preached a message about uh, about is this shortage of men? There's how he preached the message. I can't really quote it now. About men. He said, where do you find men now? Men are in beer parlor. Is it not true? Eh? Where will you find men? In working places. Is it not true? Eh? Men are scarce in the sight of the Lord. They are not there. They are not there. See now, who will give testimony about how many women came up here? How many men were inside? Zero. Zero. Evangelism. Please, we need to awake and do this work vigorously to see that you become a comforter that the Lord will look upon you and smile. Amen. Why do we need to do evangelism? You are not going to heaven alone. Will you be happy if you are going to heaven alone? Alone. Alone. Will you be happy? Will you be happy for you going to heaven alone? Luke 19 verse 10. Luke chapter 19 in verse 10. You should know that heaven is not for you alone. Amen. See, for the son of man whom the Lord said we should look unto as our Lord, our author and the finisher of faith, Jesus, the captain of our faith. What did he do? He said, for the son of man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. But you, you got your salvation and pocket it. You got your salvation and be given flimsy excuses. Excuses, 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 excuses. A brother, one of my brothers that I labored on to come into this faith. My wife is here. She will be my witness. He came visiting me, I think, a day before our journey. Or the day of our journey, that Wednesday. He came very early, visiting me. And I encouraged him to be in this meeting. I said, come for the meeting. So, what was his complaint? He said, what will he keep for his family? <laughs> I laughed. But I turned to him, I said... What if now you die? What will you be keeping for your family? Are you hearing me? Is 
church announcing itself that tomorrow, prepare, I'm coming. I told him like that. I said, if now you die, what are you going to be keeping for your family? Will they survive after your death? He said, yes. Then be in this meeting. And then he agreed to come. Zero. Are you hearing me? Men giving excuses. Even of a thing that you know you don't have power upon. You cannot have faith in God. You cannot believe in God. The Lord say, let's go to the book of Matthew 6, verse 32 and 33. What did the Lord say there? Matthew 6, 32 to 33. Look at what the Bible said. It said, for after all these things do the Gentiles seek for. Gentiles. What do they seek for? The world. Money. Wealth. Car. Houses. Things that will make them to be comfortable. That is all that the Gentiles, unbelievers are running after. Is that not all? But what says the Lord? He said, for your heavenly father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. He knows you need them. Is he not the one that created you? That opened this your mouth and give you belly? Didn't you know that you need to eat? He said he knows you, you need them. He knows our need. But what did he say in 33? But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Then why? A man too worrying of a thing you need not to be worrying of. That is the problem of man. Too troubling. Troubling yourself here, troubling yourself here, troubling yourself there, troubling here, troubling everywhere. Giving yourself lack of peace. And as to that, you will see yourself falling shortage of the real duty the Lord has assigned you and I for. God said he knows your need. Didn't God know your need? Eh? Did he know? And he can do it. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Some years ago, let me give this testimony. After my first and second child, the third child, although we did not prepare for him, but the Lord gave it. So I was, I came out in the night to the parlor. I was praying. I prayed, pray, 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 pray. After much prayer, I sat on my chair, the tree sitter. I sat on it, and the spirit of the Lord come, came whispering to me, and he said, do you believe that as you are sitting like this, your miracle can come? I said, yes, Lord, I believe. He said, I was just communicating with the spirit. I'm telling you, my brethren. He said, carry your leg. Put on your see. Let me say. Let carry your leg and do like this. I carry my leg and do like this. He said, "Do you still believe that your miracle can still come like this?" I say, "Yes, Lord, I believe." And shortly after that, sleep took me, and then I left there to the room. So when I was coming to the room, I untapped my wife that was lying on the bed, full of pregnant. Full, then in full uh, at the nine month or so. Or pregnant, and then she just woke up from her sleep. She said, Ah, come, am I sleeping or am I dreaming? Am I dreaming? I, it's like um, I, I, I was in labor. I said, Ah, what kind of a play is this? If you are in labor, would you know? Are you hearing me? Why, why, are you, why are you saying something like this? Stand up. Then she now stood up, said, Let her ease herself uh, in the bathroom. Before she came out from the bathroom, our baby came down. I'm telling you, my brother. The baby came down. I was the one that took the delivery. 
And from that day, my, my colleagues in the office, they then began to call me gynecologist. Because I was the one, I look at it, at that time of the night, I said, where will I go to? Although, how will I run? I called my neighbor, coming them to there somehow. So I said, if I leave them in this state, something dangerous may happen. So I just pick scissors and then cut, give a little bit. As God will just guide my hand, give a little space for the obliga cord. I cut it. Then I tie everything. I just did it. Then ran to the hospital. Then I went and brought the, 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 the nurses. And when they came, they said, who taught me how to do all this? I said, it's the Lord. And from that day, they began to call me gynecologist. I'm telling you, brother, God can arrange your miracle for you in the way you never drink or dream or even thought of it at all. But we are full with anxiety of the earth. Not doing the things of the Lord. That is the word. So, my brethren, God is saying to us that that is the business of the Lord Jesus when he came. is to seek for them that are lost. That are lost. So, may God ignite this fire on you and I in the name of Jesus Christ. He came. Why should we value this cause of evangelism? My brethren, evangelism gives uncommon comfort to a believer. Not only a believer, even to God Almighty. It's a channel of comfort. It gives comfort. It gives outstanding reward that we cannot dream of. In the book of Luke, chapter 15, verse 10. Luke 15, verse 10. Luke 15, in verse 10. Evangelism. The heartbeat of, of God. He said, likewise, I say unto you. Are you hearing me? There is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that was repented. It's a joyful thing to heaven when you can convert a single soul onto the family of God. A great comfort. A great comfort. And that is why you can see that our Father in the Lord is never tired. Never. Never. I'm telling you. Never. Amen. Is never tired. Amen. Yes, in the book of Psalm 126. Psalm 126 from verse 5 to 6. It said, They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. I'm telling you, it's painful for one to wake up, to embark on a journey, to go about evangelizing. Some people will be saying, where is he going to again? Say program, 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 program. Say, see him. While his mates are there doing business, business, business. And can you see? But they don't know what you are investing on. A great joy. A great joy. A great joy. Six, he that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his cheese with him. Amen. Amen. As you are giving heaven joy, 
Heaven over you will be open and then joy will be falling in place and places over your life. That is how it is. So, may God awake you and I in Jesus' name. Luke chapter 10. The book of Luke chapter 10. Luke 10. Ah, from verse 17 to 19. And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I behave Satan as lightning fall from heaven. If you are a soul winner, you embark on this call of evangelism. Some battle you don't even need to fight. The Lord will take care of them for you. I think some years ago in Anambara State, our father in the Lord was ahead of some of our brethren were behind. They were driving. And a trailer from nowhere came as if he wanted to just pick them up. And how that trailer missed his way and left them. He did not touch them. Only the wise God know where it from the now till tomorrow. Amen. And as that opened, as that thing happened, they, our mommy eye got open. And when she got, uh, when the revelation came, what happened? A mighty angel was just hovering on, the, on our international director, the Adurika. Mighty angel. Just moving over him. Just moving over him like this. Hey, and she, in her own conscience, she was panicking. Say, hey, hey, this angel, let it not come and fall on that river. Hey, if he falls, this man will be grounded. Hey, hey. And then she woke up. And then the Lord began to tell her. He said, yeah, no. Then uh, she began to receive the interpretation that this is his guidance angel. He said, ah. Then what if they are entering plane? How will they do? Will he be able to enter plane with him? He said, if he enter plane, the guardian angel will carry the plane. Yeah. Hallelujah! I'm telling you, some things that you are thinking, I'm telling you, if you pick up this evangelism, you will see God taking things for you, doing things for you that you cannot even dream of or turn about it. Is God. Behold, verse 19, I give unto you power to train on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your name are written in heaven. I'm telling you, it, as you are going on evangelism, you don't understand. You are clearing sin away from your life because you are warning people not to steal. Will you go and be stealing? Eh? You said, guy, don't smoke, don't smoke. Will you go and be smoking? Hey, don't commit fornication. Will you be doing it? I said evangelism is a unique way of adding more grace to live holy life. It had more grace to live a holy life. It had more grace to live a holy and a righteous life. And as you are doing that, what will happen? Your name will continue to be established in the book of life. So that is where the joy lies. And what happened to your father? To our Lord Jesus in verse 21. In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in spirit. You see, when you do evangelism, you give God, your creator, joy. And say, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent. And has revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father. So, for so, it seemed good in thy sight. I'm telling you, brethren, 
if you are given to evangelism, secret things will be revealed to you. You will be God's friend. You will enjoy his companionship, his fellowship. So, these are the things that God will give us as we embark on evangelism. Amen. Yes. And then, what are the fears of our evangelism? Our fear. Who are our targets? Who are our targets? Who are they? Who are they that are our target? Brethren, amen. We have what? The educated people. Amen. The end lights. You see the way this world is being, you know, full with knowledge today. Full with knowledge today. And so, we have to go there, go there with outstanding method of evangelism with them. And which I told you before, I said the kind of grace that God has poured on holiness revival movement is beyond comment. See books. What do you want that God has not given to us that is written that even though Whatever be the level of your education, if you are given any of our book to read, will you not be touched? Huh? Won't you be touched? One day, I was going somewhere. That day, I did not use vehicle. I, I enter tricycle. Ah, so I pick a book. But I can't remember the name now. I was reading. Two other people were with me. And I guess they are ministers of God. As I was reading the book, small time, I will do as if I don't know what I'm reading. I will do as if I'm closing it so that they can see the title and then it will ignite their habitant of what? Of reading. Hey, God, I would like to read this book. Ha, I would like to read this book. I'll read small as I'm going. I'll just do like this. I'll close it so that they'll read the title. And, <laughs> and I'm opening it for them. So they are reading it with me. So as I'm about going down, say, Kai, one of them, as the spirit will move him, he said, Kai, I like this. I said, Sir, do you need it? He said, Yes. I said, Please, you can have it. He said, Please, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Are you seeing it? Unique way of targeting these people and you get them. Unique way. What of visiting them and you think just as if maybe you forgot the book. No, not that maybe you forget. You just careless. You just leave it for them so that they can read. And their eyes will go open. Will go open. I'm telling you, brethren. So, many way they educated give it to them to read you for them when when will they have time that you can sit down and then be discussing for example we say office evangelism as you go to the office who will give you attention huh but if you go there with book, number of books hey please which one will you choose that you can read oh i like this one you can have it and then you move the educated. So many ways. Our fields. Amen. The students. The students that are always what? After the education life. Exam. Text. And so many things. In going to them, how will you get them? Is to see how you can give them this material and leave it with them to read to read to read so by so doing you will see many things will be happening in the name of Jesus Christ to the society at large the church goers 
Don't feel because somebody say, I am this, and then you are jittery. I tell you, the truth that you have been equipped here, they don't know it. Go ahead and open their eyes the more. I told us here, is it yesterday? I said somebody we visited some years ago in that local government who want to do a crusade. And then we met about eight to nine pastors to talk with them so that they can work with us. And as they were asking me that what is holiness for me, I said, please, I'm begging you, go and ask God. What is holiness river movement? Or who is holiness river movement? So one of them, of the pastors, when I came back to get their reply as to how to do whatever, or if they are in concert, one of them said, the reply he got is that holiness river movement, no matter your holy life you think you are, when you come to the movement, you will be holy more. He said, that is the division of holy more. Are you hearing me? That's what the man told me. And he's an elderly person. Elderly person. Holy more. He said, no matter what you are, if you come to holiness for men, you, your holiness will be more. He said, that is the holy more. I'm telling you. So, you are belittling what you have. You are belittling what you have. So, get at them. Just of recent, the proprietor of my child's school, the last born, he called for an appointment and I went there. As I went there, we, we get into talking. And of course, you know, our, our bag can never be empty with books. So on reaching her place, he said, ah, she did not know which ministry. I said, ma, I've sent much books into this year's school. I've given to, to the school, make your father and mother glad. He said, ah, that did not reach her. I said, ask your principal. I gave it to her. I said, I brought that book. And you even said you will inculcate it into the children's curriculum. He said, eh? He said, can I get it again? I said, yes. I went home, get it for him. And then the one that I have on my hand, I gave it to her. And from that day to today, she is part of my WhatsApp group that I do send uh, uh, devotional to now every morning. And if you see her response, always appreciate it. I'm telling you, you can do much for the Lord. May God help you and I in the name of Jesus Christ. The church, the backslider, women, youth, and everything. And as you embark on, you will see God doing wonder for you in Jesus' name. What of the baptism? Baptism because of time. Because we will soon switch on to the assignment that our father is has gone for now. Amen. The water baptism, which is a prerequisite to our complete salvation. It's a prerequisite. Amen. And what is water baptism? Water baptism is a doctrine inculcated by the Lord, signifying the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Of Jesus Christ. And he expects you that after you believe the word, immediately what you follow is baptism. But of course, you know that the evil Satan always go after and getting his agent to dilute you know, the world, to corrupt the world, to do so many things of the world. And you can know that many forms of baptism are there today in the body of Christ. Just to damn multitude of souls, even after coming to the knowledge of Jesus. You can see that there are baptism of sprinkling. Isn't it? Even to an infant. What does infant know? 
that you are baptizing him or her. Even unbeliever, you sprinkle upon him, say you are baptized. Amen. Some will say, baptism today should not be in the name of God the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit, but what? Only in Jesus' name. Going to corrupt the standard of God. But may the Lord disappoint them. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. What is the correct baptism? Signifying dying with Jesus. Even some people, they will go in that baptism, in, the, in, in the conducting baptism, they will do in the name of God the Father, they will put somebody in the water, bring him again, in the name of God the Son, put him in water again, bring him up again, in the name of God the Holy Ghost. Ah, ah, how many times did Jesus die? How many times did he resurrect? Then why, where do we get all this wrong doctrine from? Satan. Satan. Man and Satan in contention against God and his word. So, that is it. May God deliver his church in Jesus' name. In the book of Matthew 28, the correct baptism that the Lord emphasized that we should embark on it says in verse 19, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the world and of the and of the Holy Ghost. 20. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. And we say, Final. I say final. That is the word. That is the word. Final. But today you see what people go and between. Mark 16, verse 16. What did the Lord say there? Mark 16, verse 16 about baptism. He said, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be what? Damned. So, don't joke with baptism, my sister. It's part of what guarantee your eternal life. As you are alive, don't be procrastinating over your baptism. Yeah? And as a church here, also the word of God come to us. And for example, you are a sinner. But lo and behold, you were baptized. But now you have come to the knowledge of the truth. And now you know with this knowledge of truth, the grace is upon you now that you can, you can, be, you can maintain holy work, holy standard with God. You should go and rebaptize. So that your salvation will be complete. Is that taken? So that is the word. So we should not joke with all these things. And as we do them, my brethren, the blessings of God is sure awaiting you and I in the name of Jesus Christ. Please, let's be upstanding and begin to pray to God and say to God, help me. To be among the end time army that will comfort you. That will not zip my lips. That will not zip my mouth. That will not fold my tongue any moment from now again forever. In Jesus name. Ask God for the grace that you will be now going about doing the work of evangelist. In the name of Jesus. With this analysis the Lord gave you that you will do the work of evangelist. Let the Lord help you and I. Let the Lord see us through. Let the Lord help us that we will do 
the work of evangelist. God, see us through. Oh God, perfect us. Oh Lord, do that which only you can do. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Help us, oh God. Help me, oh Lord. In Jesus' name. Thank you, my Father. You are going to cry unto God. Don't allow me. Don't allow me, Father. Don't allow me, Jesus, to go empty. Hear my cry. Don't allow me, Jesus. Don't allow me. Hear me, Lord. Don't allow me, Jesus, to go and Father, don't allow me. Don't allow me, Savior. Don't allow me, Jesus, to go empty and dead. Please, can we raise up our hands to heaven? I want to pray for us because of our time. And so, Heavenly Father, here we are, even by the teaching of our Father and the Lord early hour this morning, that we have lost the vision. And the body also is lost. But we thank God for restoration. And as we have restored us, God, we pray that we will not joke with this restoration grace in Jesus' name. Let the fire of evangelism fall upon us. God, the stinginess that we cannot Bible. Now, the way to Bible before, today is no more that we have lost it. I say, Lord, we can do the fire in us in Jesus' name. Let the fire fall of evangelism in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, wake us up in Jesus' name. Give us this body in Jesus' name. From today, any meeting, anywhere, anywhere, God, we shall not be appearing alone, but we shall have people full of children before you in Jesus' name. Satan, powers of darkness. Evil workers, agents of darkness, polluting every area of our life. We say, The Lord scatter your activity, break your power, pull down your stronghold in the name of Jesus. Father, we are sorry. Anywhere we play gentility, anywhere we play carelessness. Anywhere we did not do this work the way we ought to do before now, we are sorry. Forgive us. We repent. Let your blood wash us from all form of our negligence in Jesus' name. Let holiness revival movement in northwest zone be on fire. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. And we say, the Lord bless us all.